Hishik Ta Ibrahagas Chiliger Fudden Stot Sha Extrachelt Leshon Nerchem Tihirta Tar Gerchem Nanini Gondidan Egdolin Ulkus Tan Gerchem Cove Scapanish Gwilshe Kurishdok Er Kurum Slauncha Er Ijikus Agus Er Nelagar Tishik, there isn't a single community nor a single sphere of our society which is untouched by the housing crisis. And this housing crisis, this homelessness crisis, is getting worse. It's hampering our health system, our education system, and our entire economy. And yet, Tishik, the quality of debate surrounding the lifting of the temporary no fault eviction ban was deeply frustrating. For months prior to its lifting, we in opposition had asked what your government would do to introduce emergency measures to protect renters from homelessness once the ban was lifted. And for months, you insisted there was a plan in train. The week the ban was lifted, we saw a series of half-baked, hastily launched plans. Some of them, including the first refusal scheme, were still in the dark about how they will work or when they'll come into effect. And all the while, the housing crisis was getting worse. Tishik, this is the second last week before Dahl and Shannon will be rising for the summer. So it's as good a time as any, in fact it's a vital time, for government to show a bit of humility and to change tack on housing policy. Because news broke on Friday last that 12,441 people are now recorded as homeless. An increase of 182 people in one month alone. And we know that these numbers understate the true scale of the problem is they only record those in state resourced emergency accommodation. Having one person in homelessness is clearly one too many. But Tishik, to see the numbers of homeless people rising every month under your administration in 2023, running budget surpluses, is appalling. And the effects of insecure housing on families in particular are severe and long lasting. We know in those figures there are 3,699 children in homelessness and they are being deprived of the safety and the security which they and their parents should be able to take for granted in Ireland in 2023. And that's why it's so frustrating to hear so little support from government benches to constructive proposals from opposition, such as our Labour Homeless Families Bill, supported by Focus Ireland, which would ensure the rights of children are prioritised when a family is to lose their home, uh, or is, like, is facing the prospect of losing their home. And there's been similar lack of support from government for measures we also introduced or proposed, like our evidence basis for lifting the eviction ban. Tishik, back in October 2022, Minister of State said the ban would provide a respite to government to address core issues and take up measures like yeah, emergency beds, tackling vacancy. You took office as Tishik in December, promising to prioritise homelessness. Yet your government is failing the 12 and a, nearly 12,500 people now in homelessness. And do you accept that in your summary economic statement to be published this afternoon, that you will have to do more? for those in homelessness now and those families facing that awful precipice of losing their home now. Um, thanks, Deputy. Of course we need to do more for people facing homelessness. Uh, and it's important to bear in mind that while there are 12,000 people uh, in emergency accommodation provided by the state who are homeless, it's not the same people. Uh, we are lifting people out of homelessness uh, all the time. Uh, so it's important to, bear, to bear, bear that in mind too. And of course there's more we need to do. But the summer economic statement uh, is essentially a document that deals with fiscal policy. Uh, it's a macroeconomic framework. It's not going to get into the details of housing or education uh, or the tax package or the welfare package. That's not what it's about. It's about the headline figures. Um, and Deputy, you're, you're right to say that we're experiencing a housing crisis, and I've always acknowledged that. Um, and that affects people in lots of different ways, whether it's high rents, uh, whether it's rising homelessness, uh, whether it's people uh, struggling to buy their first home. But I don't think it's fair uh, not to acknowledge any of the progress that has been made in recent years. And it has been considerable. Uh, you mentioned 12 years ago, um, uh, when your party and my party entered office together, we were only building 7,000 homes a year at that point. It's now over 30,000. Uh, the amount of homes being built has quadrupled uh, in 12 years. And we aim to go much higher than the 30,000 we achieved last year. Uh, house prices are now levelling off, have been falling in Dublin for the past, past couple of months, and we're seeing some really encouraging signs around home ownership uh, in particular. In the month of May, record numbers of people uh, securing a mortgage for the first time. 5,000 new mortgage applications approved, uh, 3,000 of those for first-time buyers. And each week now we're seeing 400, 500 young people, individuals, couples buying their first home. We haven't seen anything like that um, in 15, 20 years even. Uh, and that gives me a lot of confidence 
um, that uh, we can make home, home ownership a reality for more people. And that didn't happen by accident. It's because of government policies that increase supply, uh, like, for example, planning law reforms, like, for example, uh, waiving the development levies, uh, schemes like Help to Buy, which help people to get their deposit, schemes like First Home, which bridge the gap between uh, the mortgage you get and the property you want to buy, a uh, huge interest in the grants uh, to do up derelict homes and vacant properties and bring them back into use. I think 500 applications alone uh, in the county of Cork, which is extraordinarily uh, encouraging. And of course, local authority home loans, uh, which people can use uh, to get a mortgage when the banks um, uh, can't give them a mortgage. That's all significant progress. Uh, none of it happened by accident. It did happen because of government policies, many of them opposed by the opposition parties. And yes, we accept we need to do more, more on home ownership, more to bring rents down and to help renters, and of course, more to reduce homelessness. Teacher, you've given me uh, indicators of progress, but that's no answer to the 182 additional people in homelessness in the last month alone. And this has a real life effect on people. My office is in touch with a mother of three. She has a newborn baby. She's a hap tenant in fear of eviction, sleeping on the couch in her rented apartment while her baby sleeps in his pram because they have no space and they are in fear of losing even the limited space they have. So your government's policies are not helping her and they're not helping renters. Yes, we have welcomed proposals from government that would genuinely increase supply. We supported the Land Development Agency. But we're asking you in government to take on board constructive measures we've proposed, like our renters' rights bill, that would provide better security to renters like that mother of three and like the thousands of people who are increasing in number every month despite your government's policies and indeed in some cases because of them. And let me remind you, Taoiseach, that Minister of State Burke in October 2022 said the temporary ban would allow government the respite space to address core underlying, underlying issues driving homelessness levels by providing more emergency beds, tackling vacancy, vacancy, using modular homes and improving allocations and relettings to make the most of existing stock. Where are those measures now and can you say that we won't see a further increase in next month's homeless figures? Bishop? Thanks, Stephanie. We always consider uh, proposals that are uh, put to us by opposition parties uh, and indeed by NGOs and others working in the area of homelessness uh, and of course those who build homes, the home builders. Um, for example, we accepted the proposal to introduce a rent credit uh, and that has helped a lot of people with their rent, 1,000 euros for a couple, um, 1,500 we'll say for three people renting. Uh, we've also um, uh, accepted other proposals, for example, in, in relation to uh, derelict buildings uh, and other proposals in relation to tenant in situ. Uh, so we do listen to suggestions that people come uh, put across. Um, but one thing I can say about the eviction ban is it does appear to me to be increasingly clear uh, that it wasn't a successful policy. Um, for nearly every month that we had the eviction ban in place, uh, we saw uh, an increase uh, in homelessness. Uh, last month, unfortunately, we saw a further increase in homelessness, but even with the eviction ban gone, that increase is 1.5%. Now, those are real people, that's 1.5% too many, but the prediction from those who advocated an eviction ban was that it would bring homelessness down, it didn't, and they predicted that once the eviction ban was lifted that there would be, uh, to use the quote, an explosion in the numbers uh, using emergency accommodation. We have seen a further increase, very disappointing increase, but not far off the kind of rates we saw when the eviction ban was in place. Deputy Peter Fitzpatrick, please. 